Now announcing this week's special shout out, JJ Fox, uh, the YouTube channel for funny, awesome videos. My favourite video is Sith vs Jedi. Be sure to subscribe to James at JJ Fox. Hi guys, thanks for watching this Arduino tutorial. Um, this is the second lesson of the How to Build an Arduino Robot Robot series. Um, so, I made a mistake last time and I told you to buy one of these to power the Arduino um, using this. But actually, the motor shield comes with something where you can just. I'll just pick up the camera to show you. You just need to. Um, one of the, it's exactly the same it snaps onto a battery but it's just got the two uh, wires that go into here so if you bought one of these it is no big deal just snip this bit off so what we're going to do in today's lesson um as you might have seen from the intro um we're going to run a few sketches on this to get the robot to go forward get the robot to turn uh, and basically get familiar with the type with the library that the motor shield runs. Um you will need to do a bit of soldering for some of the later projects. Um I'll just uh, pick this up here. So um these here are not not five ground and five volt pins, which we will need later on. And then you've got a five volt ground and nine volt pin there. So we will do a bit of soldering with them. And what you will need for them is these. So male to female things, header pins. Okay, so let's have a little look at the motor shield. Uh, the way we're going to get it to turn is to have the wheels on one side going at full power, forwards, and the wheels on the other side going backwards, and that will make the robot turn. Um, so we're going to have a look at some sample sketches for that in a second. One more little thing before we go and look at that is, you may have noticed I've put a breadboard on either side of the chassis. One there and one there. And I've done this uh, because then we can put things, such as potentiometers, onto the chassis easily. <laughs> I say easily. Will I do it or not? easily just attach things like this uh, and prototype with stuff um, so let's have a little look at some sample sketches to, where that makes the robot move and turn okay so let's have a look at this piece of code what it does is the motor on socket 4 it's going to run it forward and backward so we need to include the AF motor library uh, and then we need to um, declare what uh, socket on the motor shield the motor's on that we're using we need to give it a name so motor is on socket 4 and then we're printing to the serial mon well we are initializing the serial monitor at a rate of 9600 bits per second and we are printing motor test into the serial monitor then we are setting the speed to 200 with motor.set speed and then we say motor.run release okay in the void loop uh, what we basically do is make the motor run forward um, and it sets the speed uh, it starts off slow and goes faster and then it delays it for 10 milliseconds and then it makes it go in the opposite direction for i equals 255 i equals naught uh, i minus minus Motor dot set speed i, so it's going to set speed at i, delay 10, so for 10 milliseconds, and then it prints to the serial monitor TOC. And then you just have this little bit of code at the end. So I've gone through that really quickly, but basically, the 4i equals 255 bits, uh, it goes through 0 to 255. And then we've set the motor speed at that, so it's going to go up to 255, down again to naught. Um, because 255 is the maximum output that we can have on one of these motor sockets. Um, so we're now going to have a look at what happens and um, what it does to the actual motors. Okay, so now let's take a look what actually happens. You need to plug in your power supply after you've uploaded the sketch to the board. 
and the wheel goes in one way and that's going the other way so it's going forwards backwards so that's what a sketch does uh, it makes it go forwards and backwards and it shows you some of the basic things like motor dot set speed, motor dot run, uh, motor uh, can't see any others on there. Motor dot speed and motor dot run are the main ones. But um, I'm showing you on this one today. So the motor dot run is whether it's going forwards or backwards. And the motor dot set speed sets for speed. So and that can be a value between minus two hundred and fifty five and two hundred and fifty five. Okay, so that's just one example sketch that we are going to run today, and we're gonna I'm gonna now show you another one that uh, involves using all the wheels and running all the motors going forwards and then backwards. So this piece of code, sorry if you can't see it very well, um, we're including all four motors: uh, motor one, motor two, motor three, and motor four. And then we're setting the speed. Well, there's two parts. For this part, we are going to get all the motors to just go forward. So for motor one, set speed 255, the top speed. Motor one, run forward. And then we're doing the same for motor two, motor three, and motor four. So they're all going to run forward. And then we're waiting for five seconds. And then look at the second piece of code motor one dot set speed 255, motor dot one, motor one dot run forward. Motor two dot set speed two five five. Motor two dot run forward. Motor three dot set speed two five five. Motor three dot run backward. And motor four dot set speed two five five. And motor four run backward. Delay one thousand. So the motors on one side are going to go forward, and the motors on the other side are going to go backwards. So let's see uh, what this does. Okay, so I have uploaded the code. Sorry about the poor lighting. I've had to move my thing onto my bedroom floor. What it does is, so it gets the wheel going in, going forward like we are now, all going in the same direction, and then um, one goes forward, one goes back, one goes backwards. Um, so I'm just going to place it on the floor in a second. Um, so look what it says. It's somewhat. It's turning now. It doesn't look very good because it hasn't my um, Arduino. This battery is very very low. But what it does, it turns around and then goes forward, like so. So it's turning, then it goes forward, turns forward so yeah that's what it does but the only reason why it doesn't look very good on mine is because my Duracell battery is very low so you yeah, know so it's not looking too good but that's basically what that piece of code does it makes it go forward and looks like one of my wires has come on this don't know so yeah that's what it does um that piece of code okay so to finish off the lesson uh, we're going to use the potentiometer to control the speed so, on your breadboard, put down a nice potentiometer. Uh, I'll put it in the middle. There's no need to put it to any of the sides. So just shove that in the middle. So as with a potentiometer, as you always do, one of the sides needs to go to uh, 5 volts. Now, because I haven't got a free 5 volt pin, I'm going to put it to a digital pin. And we can just say that digital pin is high. Your middle pin needs to go to an analog in pin. I'm going to put it to this one. And then your last pin here on your potentiometer. Let me just put it in. There we go. Awesome. Right, you need to put that into ground, which is located there on the mega board so just shove all of that in uh, I've cut the wires badly but yeah there you go that's how you need to do it so why we're potentiometer and now we're going to have a little look at uh, some code to control the speed of the motors by the potentiometer
Okay, now I'm going to explain this code. So we need to include the library. We need to state what pins the motors are on, or which sockets in this case. Then, digital write 53 high and 57 high. I've done because I always use them as my pins for supplying 5 volts for components that I'm using. But you need to put high. You need to put the pin high that uh, you have used to supply voltage to your potentiometer. And then int pin equals analog read 15, so that's going to read 15, A15, to see how far the potentiometer is turned up. And then we're making a new thing called float potentiometer is equal to, when pin is at 1023, it's equal to 255. So it's just going to convert it into um, a reading that it'll, you know, be able to run. And then we are running it forward and we're setting the speed to the potentiometer, which is the variable that we created there, or the float, or whatever. Um, the float variable. So that is it for today. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and I hope you liked my new channel art, which is coming on the screen now. If you enjoyed this video, why not subscribe to Arduino Tutorials? We make Arduino possible and electronics possible for even absolute beginners. For tips and tricks, tutorials and videos on electronics, robotics and open source prototyping, why not subscribe to Arduino Tutorial?